Now I would like to speak with you about the bone screw. A bone screw is used whenever a fracture would not be healing properly without any additional fixation. Bone screws are used in orthopedics, maxillofacial surgery, and accident surgery. Screws are in different sizes, lengths, and shapes are available, depends on the fractures. Typical screw profiles are hexagon, slot, torx, and square. There is a great variety of types of different bone screws. I would like to present you this variety. Number one will be the self-tapping screw. It means there is a pre-drilling required, but the screw cuts the thread by itself. Standard screws, for example, they have nothing. It means the pre-drilling and the thread drilling must be done externally. Cortical screw means there is no cutting with a thick core and a thin thread. And the spongiosa screws, it's different. So here is a thin core and a thick thread. So this is depends of the bone material we treated. The other point is also cannulated screws. Quite very often happened that the doctor working here with a guided wire and the screws will be put it over. And also one important thing will be B-cortical screws. So here it means the diameter will be very big, so 4.5 millimeters, but the head are extremely flat. Screws will be done in the different area. For example, the first one will be for the food area, the second one will be, for example, for the hand, and the third screw is maybe for the spine area. On the right side, you see also the possibility we have a special possibility to producing torques. Mike, but you can say surely more about the machining of the bone screws with our machine. Thank you again. So what we would like to talk about is our TNL series of Swiss machines. Uh, they are specialty designed for high mix, high volume manufacturing. What that means is when you have to do short runs or long runs, and you wanna be able to change over from different part numbers in a very fast or succession. Uh, we have a very clearly structured work area with large access travels and flexible machining. What does that mean? Traditionally in a Swiss machine, you have what are known as um, slides. Those slides have gang tooling on those. And it's very difficult for your operator to set up those gang tools without uh, poking, scraping, and sometimes even cutting himself. With us, we have turrets, traditional turret manufacturing, which means that you have the rotational of that tool, allows us to get a lot more tools in a much smaller area, and it allows us to have extreme flexibility in setup and changeover. Uh, these machines are designed to be able to have two, three, even four tools in the cut at all times, which greatly reduces your cycle times. We have a Vera thermal stable machine. You'll hear that many times as I'm going through the machine structures from index. That's a big component of how we're able to hold the accuracies and consistencies in our part manufacturing. Turret in indexing is an actual NC rotary axis. So now you can have your standard tool positions, but also add on many, many more, up to 52 tools in a very compact Swiss machine. You can have a robot. Uh, for unloading or loading of this machine. And you have a very high acceleration, deceleration with our control and drive module. You can see here the kinematics of the TNL 20-9, which is the first machine that we're talking about, and or a 29B. So traditionally, you would have uh, gang tool position, and on here, you actually have turrets, an upper and lower turret to allow for extreme versatility. And in the second version, you would have the ability to have a rotational turret with an integrated B axis. The turret design is eight stations per tool carrier. Three tools per station is allowed, which means that we can have up to 24 tools per turret with a chip to chip time of less than 0.3 seconds. You can have driven tools at every station. 
and very large tools as well, up to 45 millimeter tools for high rigidity, stability, dampening to a life, all of those things. You can have from 1,000 PSI all the way up to 2,000 PSI on up to four different stations. Once again, allowing for better chip flow, uh, better chip breakage, more consistency, getting better coolant to your dual positions. And when we're dealing with highly difficult cobalt chrome, titaniums, inconel, tasteloids, that allows you for longer tool life across that range. And you can have multiple tool holders in each tool station. This is an example of the advantage of having a turret as opposed to a gang station. If I was to put the same number of tools on this, uh, as opposed to doing a rotational axis that I have in a turret, I would have to have up to 1,225 uh, millimeters of y-axis travel versus a single turret. So now you can see here that I can get much more tools in the machine to have redundant tools, to have more complex parts, to be able to have more versatility in changeover, setup, and execution. We're going to show a bone screw being manufactured now on the machine itself. Uh, this is a 10 millimeter bar diameter by 60 millimeters in length. It's 207 seconds. And this is being manufactured on a PL 29B. So this is the integrated, interactive B axis integrated into it. 